Hello, this is my series on Sanctuary Systems, a guide for folks who volunteer at my church and a nuisance to my regular subscribers. The next three videos are all about our sound system. So I feel a need to make a few disclaimers here first. I am not an expert in sound systems. What I think I know is based on over a decade of trial and error and observation, but at the end of the day, I can't claim any real expertise. Also, if I have any technical gifting, it's not in designing the best system. That's a blank slate, which requires a blank check, and neither of those are very common in churches. No, what I have found, and what I expect is the case in a lot of churches, is that someone who knows just enough to be dangerous will be tasked with putting together a system that utilizes as much as possible stuff the church already has. And I actually like that approach. I think it shows good stewardship. Okay, brief soapbox moment here. I believe that the law of diminishing returns really applies to sound systems. I believe that you can have A level sound for 80% less than what A plus level sound would require. Anyway, that's my mentality. That's behind the way our sound system is set up. Okay, so here's a simplified overhead schematic. No, actually, I should probably go on this side. Here's a simplified overhead schematic. Uh, here's the platform and here's the backstage room. At the heart of our sound system is the digital mixer, the Soundcraft UI 24R, which sits in the bottom of the rack at the back room. It's got basically 20 inputs, two main outputs and eight aux outputs. Let's map out the signals from sources to speakers. On the platform, we have three stage boxes. Each of these has three female XLR connections that run under the platform and to the back room. We also have several other XLR cables hidden in a trough in the back of the platform. And one XLR cable run all the way to a room mic on the ceiling. Each cable is labeled on both ends with either a letter or a number so that you can say, okay, I plugged the guitar into number seven. So the cable marked seven in the back room is carrying that signal and should be plugged into whatever channel on the mixer should get the guitar. It doesn't mean that plugging into number seven on the platform means that it goes to channel seven on the mixer. The numbers and letters are just a way to keep track of the cables. We have more cables run than we have channels for on the mixer. That's to give us as many options as possible for where people need to be set up on stage. In the backstage room, there's a little rack to hold unused cable ends to help keep them off the floor and untangled. Okay, so that gets all our signals to the mixer. Then the mixer does its thing, more on that in the next video, and sends the mix signals back out. Now, we're mixing in mono at the moment, so we're actually only using the mixer's left main output, which goes to the rack-mounted sound processor, a DBX Drive Rack PA, which does some extra sound processing and also acts as a crossover, separating the mid and high frequencies that will be sent to our main speakers from the low frequencies, which will go to the subwoofers. So the processed main channel goes straight from the drive rack PA to one of the speakers mounted from the ceiling. Those speakers are self-powered active speakers, so the power amplifier is built into each speaker. But since it's a mono mix, we can take the output of one speaker and run it to the other. The subwoofer signal, however, comes out of the drive rack PA and goes into one of the rack mounted power amplifiers that we have. We have two QSC RMX uh, 1450 amps and an ancient EV uh, 7300 amp. They're each two channel amps, so that gives us six amp channels to power our passive speakers. Our subwoofers are passive speakers and our floor monitors are also passive speakers. Just as with the input cables, these output cables are also labeled. There's a cable run to a Nutrix Speakon type connector in each of the stage boxes. There are also some cables run through the trough in the back to the stage. Now, two of those are connected to the subwoofers and wired in parallel to one of the amp channels. Currently, we're using five aux channels for monitor mixes. So the aux outputs from the mixer are wired to the power amplifiers and then the power amps are wired to the monitors on the platform. Uh, we've got one at the piano, another for the singers, one for the guitarist, another for the electric guitarist and drummer, and then uh, one for the bass player. 
Last but not least, there's a delay speaker that is essentially a copy of the main mix run to a speaker further back in the room to help bring more clarity and coverage to the full length of the room. We call it a delay because we actually have to set it up to be delayed about 35 milliseconds so that the audio from this speaker arrives at the same time or actually slightly after the sound from the main speakers. Whew. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the speakers. So four of the floor monitors are simple full range eight inch speakers designed to not get in the way both in appearance and size. Honestly, they don't really sound that great on their own, but with some EQ help from the mixer, they get the job done. We also have EVS40T personal monitors. Um, they're fantastic little speakers, um, albeit a little underpowered for this application. The subs are JBL JRX 100s. They're old, they're massive, and they're passive, uh, but they still woof. The mains are QSC K12s. They have a conical 75 degree throw pattern and they are mounted and positioned to try to reduce sound reflections from the walls, uh, reduce phasing problems that can happen when sound waves overlap and still reach the back rows. Uh, they're great speakers, but we're asking a lot of them. So that's why we added that delay speaker I was talking about before. Um, it's a QSC CP8, which has similar power to the K12s, but a wider 90 degree throw, which is um, great for bringing clearer sound to those back rows. Okay, for an overview of the hardware, that's basically it. Now let's talk a little bit about the software. The Soundcraft UI24R is a digital mixer without a physical interface. The pro is that keeps the price reasonable. To get a physical mixer with comparable features, you'd spend easily over three grand. We got the Soundcraft UI24R on sale for less than a thousand. Another pro is that you can operate it from anywhere on almost any device. It doesn't even need a dedicated app. It's just a locally hosted HTML5 browser interface. The con, of course, is that fitting all of that functionality into an interface the size of a tablet screen means not everything is as intuitive as it would be on a full-size physical mixer. And that is what the next video is all about. The basic operation of the UI24R mixer, uh, at least in the context of how we usually use it here on a typical Sunday morning. So I'll see you there.